Hi, I'm Kevin Dahani, and today I'm going to be making a lion mask. Uh, I'm going to use the generic armature that I made out of Plaster of Paris, and I just decided to cover the armature with plastic just to make uh, clean up a little bit easier, since I will be using the EM217 or WED clay to sculpt the mask. Um, just a tidbit, if you didn't know, WED stands for Walt E. Disney. Disney invented the clay, and uh, it's manufactured and distributed by Laguna Clay in California. It's great stuff. It's used across the FX industry for uh, sculpting and mask making, um, and it's a water and oil-based clay. So it's very slow to dry and just fantastic for sculpting. So um, the first step is I'm going to be sculpting the mask um, using the clay, and then I will actually use plaster wrap or plaster bandages if you prefer that term um, as well as paper mache techniques to actually construct the mask itself. So first step is sculpting the mask. So as I was sculpting the armature for my Lion King mask, I realized as I was going along that I was kind of unconsciously sculpting the juvenile version um, of our young, young Simba as a lion cub. So I just went with the flow and I um, just chopped off the long muzzle that I had going and shortened his, shortened his snout, just rounded out his face and I think he's looking great. So again, this is just the very basic under armature, like the skeleton, if you will, of um, the next step, which is going to be to lay plaster cloth or plaster bandages, if you prefer, uh, over the top of this in order to create a mask that I will then um, also combine with some paper mache techniques. So that's the next step is to do the plaster wrap. Okay, so I have my supplies all ready to do the plaster wrap. This includes the um, plaster wrap, which is also called plaster bandages. I basically cut it into one and a half to two inch strips by eight inches long, which is the, the length of this roll. I also cut some smaller pieces. Um, and as I go along, I have my old scissors here, once one that I don't care. Um, if it gets dulled or not, and I'll just use it to cut to cut more as I go along. I've got my very cheap non-stick vegetable oil, um, and I'll explain that in a minute. I've got my bowl of water set up, and then the other thing that I'm going to be doing today is what's recommended for this WED EM217 clay is um, is recommended that I hit it with the blow dryer for a few minutes to get the surface kind of feeling a little leathery. Then once the surface um, gets a little bit dry, then the next step is I will spray it with the cooking spray um, and then just start doing, start doing the plaster strips. So my intention is, uh, since there's a good amount of clay here, 
um, I intend to re be able to reuse most of it. So after um, after I spray it with the cooking oil, the surface, and do the plaster strips, and when it's all done, I should be able to just scrape off the the top layer of clay, and everything underneath should be hopefully completely reusable. So we're gonna give it a shot, see how it goes. Okay, the first layer of plaster wrap is done, and so I'm going to let this dry for probably at least a half hour. Um, sometimes it'll be done in like 20 minutes, but I'm going to give it a good half hour, um, and then I'll do a second coat of plaster wrap. The first layer of plaster wrap is dry. It's been drying for about 30 minutes, so now it's time to do the second layer. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some ears. I just cut out some cardboard ears, and I'll just uh, plaster plaster wrap those right onto the head. I could have sculpted the ears out of clay like I did with the other lion head, but I found that it's a lot of extra work um, after you plaster wrap 3D ears. It's a lot of extra work to dig the clay out of those ears. It's just it's a lot easier just to, to add them on um, afterwards. So that's what I'm going to do. So the second coat of the plaster wrap is done. You may have noticed during the time lapse that I was kind of um, holding up the ears a little bit while I was doing them with the cardboard. That's because as soon as you put the weight of the wet plaster wrap on the cardboard, they got really floppy. Um, but it really only took a, a, a few minutes of just kind of holding it, propping it up, propping the ear up with just a piece of cardboard. It took a few minutes for this plaster wrap to, to just firm up enough where um, I could then let it go and just move on to the next area. So now I'm going to let this dry again for another 30 minutes, and then I'll do a second coat on the ears. The rest of the face, um, that's going to be it for the plaster wrap, just the two coats. Um, and then I'll let the, that, after I redo the ears, I'll let the whole thing dry for, for several hours, um, possibly even overnight. It's kind of getting late in the day here. Um, and then when I start up again, I will start using the paper mache clay to do very fine details um, and some other paper, uh, possibly some other paper mache techniques. I might just do regular paper mache on the back, on the inside a little bit, just for some, some added strength. So, but for now, it's going to dry and then we'll do a second coat on the ears. The second layer of the plaster wrap is complete and so it's time to um, pull this out of the mold and see how we did. I'm actually going to use the plastic. Just flip it over and see here. All right, let's see. How did we do? like it's coming away pretty easily so I'm just going to take some tools here and just scoop out the clay looks like, thanks to that little spritz of cooking spray, it's just coming right out. Wow. <laughs> so, came out in one piece. Awesome. And, um, gosh, I don't even know if I need to scrape this down much. I think I might just try to 
reuse it as is. It looks like it's in pretty good condition. So I'm not sure if the uh, plaster absorbed the cooking spray or if the clay did, but it doesn't, I mean a couple spots, but otherwise it doesn't really feel greasy or slippery at all. So awesome. Just going to reuse the clay. And the plaster cast is fantastic. Ready for some paper mache. Okay, so I trimmed the mask down around the edges, got it all ready to go. I've got my paper mache uh, supplies ready, the paste, and I tore up my Scott shop towels. And so um, what I decided to do is just to do one layer on the exterior of this. That'll just give it some extra added strength. And it'll also, um, I don't know, it kind of smooths out all the little bumps from uh, bumps and holes from the, uh, from the plaster wrap. The layer of paper mache is now dry, and so my next step is I'm going to start using the uh, paper mache clay to do some sculpting of the fine features. I already started on his ear. I just did sort of a general uh, first very um, minimal layer. I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll build more off of that. I'll do the other ear, and I'll start on the eyes. The additional sculpting I did with the paper mache clay is done, and so now I've uh, sanded that down a little bit just to make it a little bit smoother, and uh, I tinted some gesso, and I'm ready to start painting. The coat of tinted gesso is dry, and so now I can move on to painting the full colors. I finished painting the Simba Cub mask. Basically, I just used all different shades of metallic paints. Um, golds, bronzes, darker browns, um, and I pretty much just went from dark to light, and I would kind of blot out some of the layers so that the previous layers would shine through. Um, then I did um, accent paints on his ears, eyes, and his muzzle. Then the last step was to get him ready to be able to be worn in the show. And so for that, I'm just going to show what I did is I use, I take a baseball cap and I take the, um, the brim of the baseball cap, I take it off and I flip it and turn it around and I, I glue it and attach it. Well, first I sew it back onto the baseball cap. Uh, if you can kind of see it. So I, I sew it so that it's sort of flipped up. Then I use a really strong epoxy glue and I glue it on the inside of the mask. Uh, and then just for extra stability, I attached, I, I purchased and got these, uh, the nylon strapping and the buckles, just like you'd find for a, for a bike helmet. And I attach those. And so the mask is now ready for a show.